One of the most useful applications of probability is when we're calculating what's called the expected value. The question we're going to answer in this video is how do we calculate? expected value of an investment. What would we expect to happen if we make a certain investment? This expected value is something very special in probability. Basically, it's the average amount of money earned, or as is often the case, or lost, if a trial is repeated many times. And by many times, I mean like millions and billions of times. In other words, if you played the lottery a billion times, on average, how much money would you earn per game? And the bad news is it's probably a negative number. Even if you did win big, you would also lose big enough times that you'd end up losing in the long run. The way expected value is calculated is it is the sum of all of the probabilities multiplied by the payout. Whether you make money or lose money, losing money would be a negative, making money would be a positive. You multiply it by the probabilities, and you add all the options together, and that will tell you, on average, over time, what you would expect to earn. Kind of the fun example of expected value is in uh, probability games, where you're going to earn money. So let's look at a standard deck of cards. that has no jokers, so just the 52 cards, four suits. And you're going to draw a card at random. If you draw a diamond, you earn $2. If you draw a spade, you earn $1. Otherwise, you pay $1. So there's a 50% chance you're going to lose money on this game. Should you play the game? Well, to calculate the expected value, what we'll do is we'll list all the options that could occur. The probability that option happens, and the payout, I'll just use a dollar sign, if that option happens. So first, if you draw a diamond, the probability of a diamond is 1 out of 4, because there's four suits. Diamonds is one of them. And the payout you'll get is $2. It also says if you draw a spade, which has a probability of 1 fourth, that's 1 out of the four suits, you will earn $1. But any other option, there's two other suits, so that would be 2 out of 4 you end up paying $1. So money against you is always a negative number, negative $1. And the way we can calculate the expected value is we're going to multiply the probability times the payout. So 1 fourth times 2 is 0.5. 1 fourth times 1 is 0.5. 0.25, sorry. And 2 fourths times negative 1 is negative 
When we add these products together, we'll get the expected value, which is a positive 0.25, or 25 cents. Because that's positive, what that tells me is if I play this game over and over again, on average, I will earn, because it's positive, I will earn 25 cents per game. So the question is, should I play? Yes, I should play. I will earn an average of 25 cents per game. The expected value is what you expect to earn on average over time. Now, while it's very useful to look at applications in gambling, such as this game where you make 25 cents a game, or if you look at roulette, roulette is a very common game in a casino with probabilities. Turns out that you lose an average of 4 cents per game of roulette. Um, it's interesting to look at these. Where these are expected value is probably used the most often, though, is by businesses. They offer you things like a warranty. Let's say a $500 TV has a three-year warranty for just $2. If you've made a major purchase at Walmart or at various other places, you're used to this. You buy the purchase, and the cashier looks at you and says, do you want to buy the extended warranty for an extra so many dollars? Should you buy it? Well, if the probability it breaks is 1 in 300 in that warranty, what is the expected value to the company? And notice it says to the company. So we're going to calculate this from the perspective of the company. So if the company makes money, it's positive. If the company loses money, it's negative. That would be different than if we were looking at the expected value to the customer. The signs would all be opposite, because when the company makes money, the customer loses money. So you want to make sure you know which perspective you're working with. So we've got some options. We've got some probabilities for those options. And those options have various payouts. Really, there's two options with the TV. It either breaks or it works. We're told that the probability it breaks is 1 in 300. It, therefore, the probability it works must be the rest of it, 299 out of 300. And I'm going to start with the works line as we fill in the money. If the TV works and the customer doesn't fill out the warranty, the company's made two extra dollars off the customer. If it breaks, they have to pay for the TV. And so the TV would cost the company $500. But I want to be careful. It's not just negative 500 in this case, because the customer has still paid $2 to the company for the warranty. So the customer pays $2, and then the company pays $500 back to replace the TV. So we know in order to calculate the expected value, we're going to multiply the probability times the payout. And I can do this all on my calculator, each line in one step, if I use parentheses around that payout. So 1 over 300 times parentheses 2 minus 500 should give me negative 1.66. But 299 over 300 times 2 gives me a positive 1.99. And so when I add that together, we get 0.33, which, interestingly enough, is positive. That means that the company will make, on average, 33 cents per warranty sold. 
And this is exactly how they decide how much that extended warranty is going to cost. They charge enough money so that the company will make money even though they have to replace several TVs along the way. In fact, every extended warranty is always in favor of the company, not the customer. That's why I personally never buy the extended warranties. Because if I just save the money and then replace things as they break, I will come out ahead, not the company. But sometimes it's OK to come out behind. The classic example here, where we pay extra money even though the risk and expected value is not in our favor, is life insurance. A life insurance company determines a person has a 0.242% chance of dying in the next year. So they charge him or her $275 for a $100,000 policy. What is the expected value for the customer? Notice this time it's in the perspective of the customer, not the company. So when we keep in mind positive and negatives, we're thinking from the customer's perspective. So we look at the options, the probability, and the payout. Really, there's two options for this customer. They could live, or they could die. We've determined that there is a 0.242% chance of dying. Make sure we change that to a decimal, so it's 00242. Therefore, the probability of living is 1 minus that, 0.99758. And then we multiply by the payout. If the customer lives, They've paid for an insurance policy they didn't use. They've actually lost $275. If they die, there's a payout of $100,000. But again, I have to be careful. They still paid for the policy, so we have to subtract off the 275. So 100,000 minus 275 in parentheses. And to calculate the expected value, we'll multiply the probability by the payout. So under live, the customer ends up with negative $274.33.45. Under die, the customer makes, on average, $241.33.45. And when we add those together, it looks like the customer has lost, on average, $33 per policy. The customer, because it's negative, loses, on average, $33 per policy. And the truth is, on every insurance policy, whether it's life insurance, health insurance, auto insurance, homeowner's insurance, you are losing money on average on the policy. However, if you consider what would happen if the policy was needed, uh, usually it means financial disaster for either your family or yourself if you, there was no such policy. So with insurance, we often accept a small loss per year in order to have financial security in the long run should the worst happen, no matter how unlikely. So with life insurance, I go ahead and lose and go ahead and buy some good term life insurance. With uh, extended warranties on my TV, 
I'll assume that risk and I pay for them myself. That's my personal choice though and what I like to do with my finances. It's your turn to practice some of these on the homework assignment. Let me know if you have any questions and good luck to you.